All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the conformal decals mod, which is being made by form users Cinebox Andrew. And what this glorious little piece of fork looks to add into the game are several decals that will actually conform to the shape of the part you put them on, and that is a pretty awesome feature. So let's jump right right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get. And now we actually have looked at a couple of decal mods in the past, which I always loved, but my one big issue I had with all of them was that the decals were always just a standard predetermined mesh that could only fit realistically onto a specific part. So you'd have a decal that was, uh, the mesh on it was already curved for, say, a 1.25 meter sized fuel tank and if you tried putting it onto a 2.5 meter tank well it just would look weird and that's what this particular mod looks to solve as these decals will actually conform to the shape of whatever you put them on and that is amazing now you'll find all three of the decals that we do get here down in structural and the three ones that we do get start with the CDL1 generic decal, which has a set of a variety of real-world decals that you tend to see on planes and rockets that you can switch between. Very cool. We then have the CDL2 semiotic standard decal, which has a variety of decals that were designed after the semiotic decals seen in the movie Alien, which is awesome. I love that movie. And finally, we have the CDLF, which adds in decals for flags. Now, it'll default to your standard flag that you chose when you started your save, but you can change it to any other flag. And these three things are wonderful and have a lot of cool features. So let's just pop on the flag one and show you what I'm talking about. Now, first off, when you do first grab it out, you can see on here, if we actually do zoom in here, that it is actually a flat mesh decal. But once you do pop it on, it will conform itself to the part in question. And again, that's just a cool feature, but I, I do love that when you do have it as a part when you're selecting and moving it, it actually looks like a sticker. You even have up there in the top left corner, like a little peel off part. And if we do uh, flip it around here, oh, we may have to, yeah, there we go. Now we can see it better. It actually is a peel and stick adhesive. <laughs> It's just, I love that. It amuses me. We're just slapping stickers onto this thing, and that seems a very Kerbal. But yeah, I love the fact that once you do got it on the part, plop it on, and it will conform. And even if we take it all the way up to the smallest tank I've got on here, boom, it conformed to that shape. And as you can see here, that if you do go to select it, it does have that large rectangular box around it, which I don't know how exactly this works, but I'm assuming it has something to do with that, as the mod does say that it's doing this by projecting the image onto the part. So my sort of assumption there is perhaps the decal actually lives on the outer side of that box, and then that is what is projecting it onto the thing. I'm probably wrong there. I don't know how this works. Works, but I know that it does work and it works well and what makes it even better is that you can actually change and customize all of the decals. Now you can see here these are sort of the standard sizes of the CDLF, this is the standard size of the CDL1 and this is not the standard size of the CDL2. If I actually pop that on that's how that normally starts. Because if we click on any of these, if we right click to bring up the context menu, we got options. And the one at the top is scale. So you can adjust it to be smaller or larger. Now you'll notice when you get to the more extreme sizes, it gets weird. Uh, when we go up to the high scale, it kind of cuts it off at the ends. And when we go to a scale of zero, <laughs> it, um, it covers up like half of the entire part, which is actually kind of cool. If you want a different colored tank, 
you could pop on one of these decals and you'll just have to put on like two of them to cover the whole thing. But yeah, that uh, that does amuse me there. Now, if you do click off, it's kind of hard to re-click the one once you select the depth of a zero. But you know what? I still think it's funny. Now, besides the scale there, we also have the depth because one of the fun things here is that it actually does depend on how far back that box goes as to where it's being projected. And so if, say, it clicks onto a part but then there's a deeper inset section of the part, you can actually move the depth back and you can see the box has gotten bigger. And it's going to project that image all the way down, which is pretty cool. So again, yeah, if you have like an inset little alcove inside of a part, it'll project that flag or whichever decal into that back portion. And it can go all the way up to a depth, a depth of two or again, the depth of zero, which just goes real weird. But again, I, I kind of like that, it amuses me. Now, then we also have the opacity. If you don't want it to be solid, you can actually make it a bit see-through all the way to zero, so it's not there at all. And then for the flag, we have the cutoff percentage, which I gotta admit, on that one, I'm not entirely sure what that part does. We have a similar problem, or not problem, but a similar sort of feature with, uh, oh, actually, no, never mind, it's on the flag too. The edge wear. And this seems to do nothing for me. Even if I zoom all the way in here, I assume, which we actually are, that it would make the edges look frayed or something. But no matter if I have it at zero or a hundred or anywhere in between, I personally can't tell a difference. So I don't know if it's doing something just like super subtle or if I'm just blind as a bat or if it just currently does nothing. I don't know, but it's there. And of course, we have the final option of select flag here, so you can actually choose between any other flag available to you, which is pretty nice. So you can change it up on the fly and even add in your own custom ones. Like, of course, we have our custom flag in here if you want to add in some other weird things, which is cool. Now on to the CDL1 here. We have the same sort of options. We've got the scale, the depth, the opacity, and the edge wear. We don't have the cutoff one for this one, but we do have that edge wear. But more importantly, we have 31 different variations of this, with this one here being the hazard warning. Of course, we have high voltage, radiation, RF, an ejection seat, another ejection seat. We've got danger high explosive, a hydrazine thing there, a rescue arrow, curb net, explosive bolt warning, jet intake left and right, a remove before flight, a AV gas only, jet fuel only, no step, a just diagonal stripey thing, a plane stripe, a ground symbol, number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero, and finally, kind of a little bit of a joke, the critical space flight hardware do not touch. My personal favorite there, that one's just fun. And yeah, so you got 31 different options there, which really gives you just a lot of fun things to do. And then of course, finally on the CDL2, well, we've got 32 decals on this one where we've got the hazard decal, blank decal, pressurized gravity, pressurized uh, DG, a cryo vault, air lock, a bulkhead door, unpressurized area, pressurized gravity, pressurized a DG, a suit locker, photonic system, a laser, an electronic system, a life support system, a bridge, computer terminal, intercom, a ladder, maintenance, storage, storage food, storage refrigerated, a storage hazardous, galley, coffee, auto dock, then directional arrow, then high radioactivity, radiation hazard, radiation bunker, and finally, exhaust. So yeah, we've got a lot of cool options in here that are so great. And just like with the others, you can scale it down, you can scale it up, you can change the depth, the opacity, and all that sort of stuff. 
and just have loads of cool options for things to do. Now, we do also have the button, like with the flag, to select a subtype, but as you can see, with just all the things that we have, it kind of is weird and crazy to try and select from here, so, you know, maybe don't use that and just use the arrows. That seems much easier. But yeah, I love having all these uh, different fun decals and their ability to just be slapped onto any part and conform. As you can see, it is even conforming to the side of that little uh, tube or whatever that's supposed to be on the side of that tank. Now, that does also mean you can kind of get some weird things going on with the conforming sometimes. For instance, if we take this flag, make it uh, big-ish there, and try and put it between these ridges, you'll see it does go on the ridges. But here's the bit. It um, only seems to go on the more flat-ish parts of the ridges. So you can see in here, like, in between the ridges, it puts the flag. At the top of the ridges, it puts the flag. And on the sides, you can see it there where the ridge actually goes up or goes down. It's very, it's very light, but it is there, but hard to see. Now, I've played around with like the depth and things like that, and that doesn't seem to help much. And perhaps if I did play around with more things there, perhaps I could get it to work fine. But still, it's, so it can look a bit strange on occasion, depending on the part. But overall, it is still very much worth it to be able to actually plop these different conformal decals onto any part you like, really, and see how it goes, even if it is a custom-sized tank, which is wonderful. So if you'd like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But uh, that, my friends, is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.